dude! Oh, what? It's fucking me! Wait... No, it isn't. Ooh. Ah, what are you, the devil? What are you gonna do? Cry about it? What's up, everyone? How's it going? Welcome back to another Matty GM video. I hope you're doing well. I sure am. Because DMC is back. Call me Initial D because we're coming at you with some DEJA VU! For those of you who've been with my channel for a while now, you may remember the short-lived but well-received Devil May Cry boss ranking series I did, where I was going to rank every boss in the franchise from worst to best. Except it never got past the halfway point, falling off after only two episodes. That happened for a couple of reasons. The first reason was my life evolved into a chaotic Ooh. mess, and I just got really lazy. You could have seen that coming. Second, I played DMC Devil May Cry, so now I can include those bosses in this ranking as well. And the third reason... <laughs> and with that came a new boss. And... I faced it on the PS5, because your boy played the Devil May Cry 5 Special Edition. So I think we should give this series a reboot. I'm your prime day, you ugly sack of shit. No, 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 not, not that kind of reboot, an, an actually good one. It'll now be a six-part series, with each video covering ten bosses, starting from the worst at 60 and going all the way down to number one. This list will include every boss from Devil May Cry 1, Devil May Cry 2, Devil May Cry 3 Special Edition, Devil May Cry 4 Special Edition, DMC Devil May Cry Definitive Edition, and Devil May Cry 5 Special Edition. Every boss in the franchise, outside of Peak of Combat, which I don't have. I'll be talking about the bad bosses in a little less depth than last time to speed through them quicker, seeing as you already heard my thoughts on them before, though if there's any new points, I will certainly give them their due diligence. However, I'm more interested in getting to the best bosses in the franchise, because goddamn, when this series goes, it goes hard. But before we can get to boss excellence, we gotta slog through the top 10 worst bosses in the Devil May Cry franchise, Special Edition. Yes, that is what I'm calling this remastered ranking series. It's very clever, I know. Some of my commentary will be just the same as it was in the previous video, because I sure as hell know these bosses aren't getting any better. But there are a couple changes to the list, so this video is still worth the watch. Also because I'm funny. Or at least I try to be. Anyways, without further ado, let's get back into this ranking. Let's rock, baby. Coming at you with a surprise change right off the bat, we have Trismagia as the new worst boss in the entire franchise, in my opinion anyway. No, it's not because Infested Chopper got any better, I've just reprioritized what I hate in a boss battle, and this guy is the new bottom bitch. As I said the first time around, this is one of the only Devil May Cry 2 bosses that actually comes with some difficulty. Now is that a good thing? Fuck no, I actually need to try now, that's not enjoyable. I liked it when I could curb stomp every boss in this game in under two minutes. This three mask, one mask bitch is infuriating. You have to shoot to kill, like most other bosses in the game that you'll afford up to this point, but this guy throws a few new wrinkles into the formula. Only one of the three masks is shootable at any one time, and controlling the lock on to try and hit that one mask is a pain in the ass. Plus, they have quite a large amount of elemental attack variety. They actually managed to kill me on my first playthrough because their attacks do good damage and are kinda hard to dodge with Devil May Cry 2's clunky combat style. Plus I didn't find many blue orbs up until this point. As a side note, while rewriting this ranking video, I came up with another reason as to why I hate this boss so much. The point of Devil May Cry is to use every tool at your disposal to achieve stylish combos and insane spectacle. Whereas in this fight, you can only use guns. You just hold down one button, and that's your gameplay. You could just go to an average American's backyard and see the same thing. Trismagia commits the worst sin a boss can commit, especially in this franchise, being frustratingly boring and boringly frustrating. 
For those reasons, I feel no hesitation in putting this boss at the bottom of the list. Hey buddy, welcome back. I bet you didn't think you'd get a promotion, eh? Don't worry, you're still one of the worst bosses I've ever played. I've said it all before and there's not that much to say, so let's try to be brief, though knowing me that'll still result in a 3 hour video essay. This boss sucks. This chopper chases you through an entire level where you have to go through shitty platforming as it does its damnedest to knock you off. No, you can't kill it. It's saving itself for the big finale. It's more frustrating than hard and has no satisfying difficulty or moments. Throughout this entire spectacle, you're fighting platforming controls instead of a boss. It's basically the bed of chaos except slightly less awful. And what do you get when you finally ascend to the tallest building in all of this random area? Trismagia. Die. A battle where you just hold down the bullet button. What fun and original game design. I already discussed why a boss like this is exactly against what makes Devil May Cry Devil May Cry, but this boss has a different subset of sins compared to the Mask Boys. Is it hard? No, thanks Sparta. But the new unique wrinkle is that you can be knocked off the building, requiring you to climb back up the same lackluster platforming segment, but now you'll have helicopter hellfire raining down upon you. Oh, wonderful. Oh, and don't think I've forgotten infested tanks, seeing as this spot technically covers the infestant boss, not just the infested chopper. The tank is even easier and somehow even more dull than the helicopter, seeing as you can just sit under the tank and hack away until it's dead with no thought or fear of death. Just mash triangle and everything will turn out fine. And thankfully, that's probably the last time I'll ever have to speak about these two absolutely awful battles. Water levels in games suck. Bosses in the water suck. Fish suck, unless they're cooked and beer battered. Mix all those three together, except for the beer battering, and you get the third worst boss in Devil May Cry history, Tedobesu. This shit fish. All this guy does is swim around and try to smack you with a total of two different attacks that I ended up seeing, and they're not excruciatingly hard to avoid, and they do minimal damage. So, if it's so inoffensive and easy, why is he so low on the list? Well, for one, the water controls suck in Devil May Cry 2. For two, this boss has way too much health, so he takes far too long to beat, especially because you're limited to a shitty needle gun attack. For the third and final reason, this fish turns invisible constantly, and while it's like that, you won't be able to attack it because you can't lock onto it, and good luck aiming your gun manually. So most of this boss fight is just swimming around this boring arena, waiting for this thing to show itself so you can try to hold down the gun button, getting in maybe one or two decent hits before it turns invisible again, and, with the size of its health bar, you'll be doing this over the course of several minutes. And none of it will be enjoyable. I can personally guarantee you that, 100% Matt TGM confirmed. It has so many ways to stall out this fight, which wouldn't be so bad if the fight was actually good. But, as I'm pretty sure I've made clear, it's not. I guess we now know why this boss is a catfish. Because it's a pussy. Jesus, why are all the names in this game so stupid? Noctpateran. 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 Noctis. Cup noodles? Who the hell would name a boss this? The name is probably the most memorable thing about it, because upon writing this script, I couldn't remember for the life of me what this thing actually was. Upon remembering, I wished I could forget again to save that valuable brain space for almost anything else. This stupid moth is terrible. Why are all moth bosses in gaming so damn bad? And why are they all so boring? This guy is like the infested chopper. The only real way to fight it is just... However, he at least can summon minions that can damage you for quite a bit, so he get marks over the last three for being kind of engaging in a way that didn't make me want to die, unlike Trismagia. Don't get me wrong, I'm not giving it praise at all. Summoning random enemies is perhaps the laziest form of difficulty padding, short of just giving it more HP and damage arbitrarily. However, when you're at rock bottom, the only way you can fly is up, before you clip this damn thing's wings. Which, by the way, will take about a minute if your guns are fully upgraded. This boss falls over so easily. 
After he dies, just finish off whatever minions he summoned and you get the win. The extremely unsatisfying win. Ugh. Seeing as the bosses so far have either been based on normal animals, man-made vehicles, or just ugly masks, this boss is a welcome breath of fresh air, at least in terms of aesthetics. However, its value is completely surface level. By the final boss of Lucia's campaign, Arius Argosax is quite the disgrace. He's one of two bosses in the same level, and he's a massive step down from the boss before him. Aside from a Bloodborne worthy visual design, seriously, credit to the artists at least, he's completely unremarkable. All you have to do with this guy is walk around or jump over his two attacks that I noticed and spam knives, going into Devil Trigger as soon as you get the chance so you can knife harder. You know, the same thing I've ripped into every other boss on this list for. Limiting you to ranged only combat is just cheap and boring, and it's the final boss. That just makes it feel even more lazy. He does deal decent damage I suppose, and it is a unique perspective switch for a boss battle in this game, fighting him at the bottom of this chasm while he looms over you menacingly, but that is the tiniest possible praise I can give to this terrible fight. The reason it stands above the others is just because of the visual design. It's a major letdown for the true final boss of Lucia's campaign, especially seeing as the other final boss? Well, we'll get to that in time. That's just a piece of crap. Oh, Arcana. It's sad that the basic bitch version of Arius is superior to his demonized form, but that's the reality we all live in with Devil May Cry 2. The name of the game is Disappointment. Also, when I said basic bitch, the bitch part should be emphasized. This guy just hides behind minions and pointless revolver shots that barely ever touch you, or while he teleports around the room, sipping cheap wine. Seriously, he just sits there and lets you beat on him. Is he aware that he's a boss battle? Or does he think he's in some sort of corporate meeting? For one of the main villains of the game, he's just as much of a joke as the rest of Devil May Cry 2. Seriously, every boss we've been through so far is from Devil May Cry 2, and they all suffer from basically the same issues. That's just sad. I swear that this isn't just a case of me hating the bosses because I dislike the game. I mean, I have my problems with Dark Souls 2, but I can easily notice the standout fights and praise them accordingly, like Fume Knight and Cyrilon. In Devil May Cry 2, there's just no standout fights, or at least not stand out for the right reasons. But hey, Mechanics is only one half of a main antagonist, so let's look at the story. Arius is the main antagonist of the game, who has taken over this island with his large corporation, Ouroboros. He's also an evil sorcerer who wants to gather the four arcana to absorb the power of Argosax to take over the world. Why? Don't know. Seriously, he gets no personality beyond evil sorcerer wants more power because power. That's lame. He's hardly in Dante's campaign, and whenever he is, the impression he leaves is of a weak, pathetic man. Which, maybe that was their intention, in which case fair play, but you didn't make it engaging. In Lucia's campaign, he's at least a little more active, but only as a mouthpiece to tell Lucia her backstory, and the fight sucks just as much, especially with Lucia's weaker combat. The only credit I give Arius over the earlier fights is that he's not overly frustrating, He's an easy source of red orb farming in Lucia's campaign, and this fight is the source of two cool Dante lines, and in Devil May Cry 2, you take what lines you can get. Your sweet step? A false coin for a false god. What the fuck? King? Yeah. Here's your crown. Oh, oh and I can always get a laugh out of his battle cry. If anybody was looking for some stuff, then all they'd have to do would be to follow the spiders. For my thoughts on the original Phantom boss from Devil May Cry 1, wait till he pops up a lot later in the list. As for this rehash, boring as hell, but at least he dies quickly. Though that's not really a compliment. Oh, at least the boss is over fast. The worst thing about him is how lazy they were with implementing him into the game. It's literally the same boss from Devil May Cry 1, but you fight him with much shittier controls and combo styles. Also, the animations have been tweaked to be worse. Seriously, what's with this lava spew attack? They nailed it in the first game, and that was an entire year ago. 
He's got none of the personality, none of the story significance from the first game. He's just a lousy inclusion to an already padded part of this drab experience. This ape may seem innocent, but beware of his incredible power. Let your guard down for a moment, and you'll find yourself at his mercy, as he twists the very environment around you to his will. Killing- Oh, sorry, sorry, got confused. That's the wrong orangutan. Oranguran is the first boss you'll fight in this game in Dante's campaign, and he's serviceable, I suppose. He's nothing amazing. He's not even good. Mediocre would be a strong word to call him, but he's a tolerable opening to the game, and a decent teacher, I suppose. He has ranged attacks, damaging swipes, and a decent health bar. You'll get a decent learning experience out of him if nothing else. He's as basic as they come, but at least he sets you up well for the lackluster bosses to follow. And he doesn't do anything directly offensive either. He's not a load of unfair crap like Trismagia, or overly boring like Tadabesu. However, I'll use this guy as a tool to establish one of the biggest problems with Devil May Cry 2 boss design. Guns in Devil Trigger. These things are just straight busted, and it's a good thing too, because without them, all these ranged-only bosses would be even more frustrating. However, from an objective gameplay standpoint, having weapons this overpowered with barely any limitations to them is just bad game design. You can finish off every enemy from range with no danger, and as I've said, sometimes that's your only method of battling the bosses as well. Though, thankfully that's not the case here, you can't actually go to town with that sword on your back. However, why would you when you have such a powerful weapon at your disposal? You're handicapping yourself by not playing the game apparently the way it was intended to be. This is just sucky, which adds fuel to the blaze, which will hopefully destroy Devil May Cry 2 so I never have to talk about it ever again. Melee only bosses in a game with broken ranged weapons. Yeah, this'll end well. To their credit, Tata Russian and Plutonian actually have somewhat decent melee attacks. It feels like these bosses are trying their hardest to kill you. And as we've seen before, that's not exactly a common factor in Devil May Cry 2 boss design. If you were less powerful and the melee combat was less clunky, these bosses could actually be fun battles. One of the main problems with a Dante fight is that the boss knocks you back very far away whenever he hits you, encouraging ranged combat, which will destroy this guy. Yes, you can choose not to use guns, like I did in this footage for whatever reason, but that's deliberately handicapping yourself. You can't ask a player to do that without some sort of incentive, and there is none. You can just choose to blast away. As Lucia, he's equally weak and has a different name for some reason, but at least the room is smaller and allows him to stay on your ass. Not that he's very difficult either way. Melee and knives will melt this guy just as easily as Dante. When you fight the boss as Lucia, he's a tutorial boss though, so him being easy is more excusable, seeing as he's more of a learning experience. But if you played the campaign second, like I did, because come on, who's playing Devil May Cry 2 for this chick? Kill me! You will have already seen all he has to offer, and he doesn't even have environmental obstacles in the second fight. But hey, at least he's a better teacher than Oren Gurren, hence his higher placement on the list. Also, Tata Russian? Where's Tata Japanese? Oh my god. It's a boss that isn't from Devil May Cry 2. And it's in the top 10 worst bosses in the franchise. Uh, are we living in a simulation? Is this a parallel world? Has the multiverse gone mad? No. I just hate this fight. If anyone's going mad here, it's me. The Leviathan insides are one of the more unique fights in Devil May Cry 3, mainly because most of those bosses are good and this boss sucks. You need to hit these giant whatever they are on either side of the lost arena, which will reveal the central orb which you need to deplete the health bar of. In the meantime, it'll shoot lasers at you that you need to dodge, with jumping being a reliable option, especially if you have air hike. Each target is fully stationary and they don't change throughout the fight, beyond stealing your Devil Trigger meter over time, therefore preventing you from abusing it. Which is, you know, a great way to learn the mechanic you just unlocked after the previous level. So this boss is just fighting standstill objects. That doesn't sound like a challenge, there must be more. You're right, there is, and that's why I hate it. There's a ton of stupid mobs that get spawned in infinitely, and they seem to have stagger resistance meaning most of this fight is just getting through buffed up basic bitches that do way too much damage and smack you far away from the weak spots or into the lasers. 
That's why I hate this boss. It relies on basic enemies, the boss is an orb, the music isn't kick-ass, there's no spectacle, and I dread it every time I go through Devil May Cry 3. Yes, I know it has a weakness in Agni and Rudra, but that doesn't compensate for all the factors I just mentioned that make this boss a pain in my ass. And worst of all, you have to do it twice. Thanks, Itsuno. Apparently, boss rushes to you are what poison swamps are to Miyazaki. Oh well, at least the ending cutscene is pretty flashy. A good way to wash the taste of all these terrible bosses out of our mouths as we reach the end of the video. Well everyone, I hope you enjoyed the top 10 worst bosses in the Devil May Cry franchise special edition. Revisiting this list was surprisingly fun considering the awful content that it contains, and I feel it's an improvement over the original. The picks are more accurate to how I truly feel about these bosses. Do you agree with my picks? What were your top 10 worst bosses in the Devil May Cry franchise? Please let me know down in the comment section below, I'd love to get the discussion going. I love hearing from you guys, and I hope you're excited to continue this series with me. The next episode is already fully scripted, and I'll begin working on it as soon as I can. I'd like to thank you all for watching, and I will see you all next time.